an ever-changing world, Life Changes Network presents the authentically entertaining voice of truth and inspiration. This is Life Changes with Filippo, with the always unforgettable, ever insightful conversations that captivate our fascination and insatiability for the inspiring moments of real life journeys. As we, as one, strive for higher planes of existence and a better understanding of our true selves and the world in which we live, always remembering life changes. This is radio like you've never felt before. Good for all and all for good. And now, your host. The MC, the master of change, Filippo Voltaggio. Talk about changing the world. We've been changing the world for 200 episodes. This is our 200th episode, and uh, I, I am so glad we're all here and that our guest is here to celebrate with us on our 200th episode here on BBS Radio with uh, this show, Life Changes with Filippo. And, you know, when, we, when I actually first came up with this concept about five years ago for the title of this show, and, and then we've been doing the show now for uh, a, a few years, but... Um, well, about five years ago, when I said life changes with Filippo, I don't know why. I, I know I remember when it came to me, and I remember the circumstances as to what I was thinking. But as to really what life changes meant to me, I, I didn't have a full grasp of what that was. But I knew that it was something. And when I started sharing it with my friends and my coworkers, and and in in the other job that I was doing before this. I was met with a lot of resistance. I was met with life changes. Really, people don't want to talk about life changes. People don't even want to think about it. I can't believe you're thinking of naming a show life changes. Um, and so I kept persisting, saying, no, it's it's life changes with Flippo. And I, I, I don't know why it was just like, that's what I'm feeling. And, and others were saying, it sounds like the change of life, you know, and it's like, no, nobody wants to talk about that. Nobody. And people, people don't, people are resisting change. People don't want to change. They, they do. And, and that was the conversation I was having with almost everybody I was talking to at the time. Very few people, if any, said, wow, life changes. Yeah, it's about time we think about and talk about life changes. And here we are. Five years after that episode, uh, and now 200 shows into Life Changes with Filippo, we're seeing life changes everywhere. People not only are flocking to our show, thankfully, but they're talking about it. It's on television, and the, the piece de resistance just this week, just this week, a rapper, a rapper releases... Uh, uh, his his album and the album is entitled simply life changes you know we were on to something and we're still on to something and actually i'm, I'm not going to mention who the rapper is i we're actually uh in in contact with him to see if we can get him on the show to talk about what that means to him because ironically or maybe not so ironically right in line actually i should say he talks about some of the changes that have gone got gone gotten happened uh in his life on his way to his whole 19 years of living by the way <laughs> but here he is 19 years old and he's saying and a rapper whatever that means he's saying that uh life changes is important and and that you got to do it and this is what he's been through and we got to go through this shit or whatever how he puts it um and 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 here we are so happy 200th anniversary happy mark 200th anniversary. <laughs> and we've certainly been through some changes to get here <laughs> yeah that's for sure uh, you know actually it wouldn't be appropriate to talk about this without a, a shout out and a thank you to our producer dorothy who i said to her this afternoon dorothy thank you because if it wasn't for you we wouldn't have gotten to our first show, much less <laughs> past our first show. <laughs> Indeed. Thank you, Dorothy. Thank you, Dorothy. And to think how many people we've talked to about the changes that they've gone through um, and 
what they've done and what we've done and it's it's amazing. Well, even at the halfway point, we had a we we kind of had a, a show that was a snapshot of of some of the changes to that point, and we're a completely different yeah show today, and will be a different show tomorrow. Yeah, you know, because it is that's what this is about. Is the one constant we like to say that life changes, and you know, the difference with us and other shows is that we are watching ourselves intently. We are watching each other intently and sharing our experience and evaluating it, and observing it, and enjoying it, and, and doing that with our guests, and then now watching our guests, now that we've had a history, watching how they've evolved, and how their lives have changed, not only in what they were doing before the show, but since they've been on the show, yes, as true. a result of the show, it's true. and uh, really some amazing stories. It's true, and actually, thank you for mentioning that, and that and that means a lot to me, and I know to us, so um, that's that's very powerful. So, and, and tonight is no different. To help celebrate our 200th anniversary here, we've got Stuart Davis on the show, and I, I can't think of a better guest, because... For tonight's show, especially, and especially for life changes, because this guy has been through so much in order to get to where he is. And he, like the rapper, um, uh, from the rock and roll perspective and from the comedy perspective, is is bringing people to consciousness for, uh, through through comedy, through humor, and and through him being who he is and and being the most of who he is. And 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 he goes out there. Um, we'll talk about just how out there he goes and have fun with it uh, when we come back after this. True performance takes more than just working out. Every day we demand more from our body. But what does your body demand? Hunger is not your body's call for empty calories. It's your body asking for nutrients it's lacking. It's time to reward your body with Boku Superfood. Made from the world's finest organic ingredients, vitamins, minerals, amino acids, and essential trace nutrients. All developed naturally and organically from nature's most nutrient-dense foods. Boku Superfood is quite possibly the best thing you can feed your body. So listen to your body. Reward it with pure, raw, beautiful food. Boku Superfood. Clean water is not enough. Reverse osmosis, distilled water, and most bottled waters are devoid of naturally occurring minerals. They are acidic, unstructured, and hard to absorb and rob minerals from the body. Ionways ionizers produce a super abundant supply of powerful antioxidants in each glass. Ionized water has a reduced molecular cluster size and a negative charge, hydrating you up to six times better. Water from an Ionways ionizer will help you restore your body to its natural pH balance, boosting your vitality. An ionized water more effectively flushes acidic toxins from within your body. Drink the healthiest water available today. Ionways Water Systems, their water changes everything. To learn more about Ionways Water Systems and how you can own one today, visit our website at lifechangeswithfilippo.com and click on our sponsor page. You are listening to Life Changes with Filippo on the BBS Radio Network with your host, Filippo Voltaggio. You can visit us online via Twitter and Facebook and at lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O. It, it is Filippo, and I'm laughing because it's so funny. I'm looking at the picture uh, that I posted of Stuart Davis, our guest tonight, on our website at lifechangeswithfilippo.com. And of all the pictures that we could have chosen of him, I chose this one because it made me laugh and it says so much about him. And he's, he's got, um, he's in prayer mode with his hands uh, together, like in prayer mode. And he's got this monk wrap on him and, and then a, a, a no, you know, the no shirt on and this monk wrap on him. And then he's got these sunglasses on. And just as the show's about to start, Mark puts on his pair of sunglasses. <laughs> and, and I think that's just awesome. That's perfect. I, if we were on TV right now, I'd, I'd need mine and, and we'd all, we'd all look like Stuart Davis. Uh, let me, let me tell you a little bit more about him. If that doesn't say enough already, Stuart Davis is a writer. He's a director. He's an actor, a comedian and a songwriter. Naturally, Stu's uh, debut television series, Sex, God, Rock and Roll, allows him to play in myriad ways, um, but his day job has always been rock and roll. Having performed thousands of shows and released 14 albums, 
Davis is a pillar of the showbiz carnival. But in the past few years, he's been branching out into other forms of fun, combining original songs, comedy sketches, and monologue. Uh, Stu's TV show is a mosaic of mediums that suits his multifaceted passion. And I love this quote so much, though, that I had it posted on our website. Here's from the Irish Times in Dublin, Ireland. Razor sharp improv lurking amid the minutia of his observations on life and the universe are some startling insights. I think he knows what he's doing. Davis pulls off the most elusive of party tricks. Even the gods were grinning. Well, we're grinning right now. Stuart, thank you for being on the show with us. Thank you so much for having me. 200 <laughs> in a row. 200, yes. Congratulations, that's awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. And you know how hard that is to make that happen, so uh, it's, it's fun. Two shows. two shows is hard. I mean, let's face it, two shows can be a doozy. So 200, I think, is absolutely <laughs> remarkable. You should uh, you know, light a bonfire down at the beach tonight, strip naked, get a little <laughs> egg and party on. Come on, toss some torches. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me write that down so I know exactly how to do it and in what order. Stuart, But don't you know, start without me. <laughs> uh, I wrote up on Facebook, I said, uh, jokingly, of course, tongue-in-cheek, I said, I'm nervous because Stuart Davis is on our show today, um, and you, you can expect anything from Stuart. And, and you know, the actual, absolute truth is that I always have notes with me, and I literally am doing this whole show without notes because... <laughs> <laughs> because it's you <laughs> so how to get how speaking of you how did you get to be you oh uh, it began with some copulation from my mother and father <laughs> <laughs> in a cornfield in a cornfield in iowa where most of the magic of life begins <laughs> Does your mother know you tell this story? Okay, with, oh. with, with the show like Sex, God, and Rock and Roll, what's the first thing you're going to start with? Of course, the sex. So, all right, so we got through that part, and then what happened? You found God, and then Rock well, and Roll? Well, really, I mean, that's, that's an interesting sequence, because, I mean, you could probably trace um, back, you know, in my tradition of Buddhism, there is the subtle body, the causal body, and the gross body. And so there's there's definitely a way of thinking about identity that's very flexible. And so you could think, how did my physical body come into being? You know, I'm, I'm half joking, but of course it's true. It's like it's through procreation. And then you have the subtle body, <clears throat> which is a more mysterious emergence in the cosmos. And I think that that goes back to before the physical incarnation occurs. And, you know, depending upon your belief system, you could say that that is the essential self that transmigrates through lifetimes. And then you have the causal body, which is right there at the tipping point back into Godhead and the unmade and the unborn. So I think that it's a very fascinating question. How do you become who you are, especially when, as you were mentioning in your intro, you know, the, the constant is change. Um, our nature is to have our natures evolve and transform and sometimes regress and spiral down and it's a very messy affair and mm -hmm. the self is probably the most slippery thing i'm aware of in the cosmos so i have less of an idea of how i became who i am you know than i did 10 years ago or 20 years ago i think it the mystery and enigma of it increases for me as i as i live longer mm. Good answer, good answer. And actually, I, I mean, you said so much in the answer. And this is interesting because I was sharing with friends and colleagues uh, when I was looking forward to this show. I mean, this guy gets it. I, I mean, he, he, he just gets it that there's just so much more than what's going on. And, and as I listen to your humor and listen to your songs or watch you on video, it, it's like these little subtle things that you throw in there. And, and, and people, some people don't know. They just think, oh, that's really funny. But they walk away remembering some of this stuff and thinking about it later, right? It, I hope. You know, you hope. One, of the things, <laughs> yeah, one of the things about performing and whether you're in front of a live audience or the event is recorded, etc., you don't get usually the benefit of knowing what the nature of that person's relationship was with the joke or the song or the TV episode or whatever it is. So 
I do like to perform live in front of people because there is an immediate feedback loop that's right. that's very dynamic and and gives you a very strong reading. But you know that's tricky too because the other thing that settles in for me the longer that I work as an artist is that having an agenda of hoping to transmit something that's didactic or that, you know, even having any kind of agenda, like I'm, I know this thing and I'm going to give it to you. Mm. That is definitely, I've lost my interest in that as time has gone on. And I'm, Mm. I'm more interested usually in what kind of surprise could happen between us, you know, what, because the audience is just full of very mysterious, very deep, um, you know, people I've never met before. So it's like there's all of these, you know, this teeming atmosphere of adventure waiting to be had. And so the more that I perform, the more that I'm eager to dive into that and to find out what that's about. And so I get, I mean, what I do know is that I leave performances and I leave audiences very often feeling that they have really changed me. I mean, this last year alone, I feel like I was... um, healed very very much by audiences my dad passed away about a year ago and this Mm -hmm. tour and being with the people on this tour has really uh, gone a long way towards being a catharsis for me so i don't know what happens but for them but for me it's very powerful and it's a big gift wow it works both ways and it just goes to show that you're doing what what you're supposed to be doing and we're glad you're doing it actually we're talking to Stuart Davis here on Life Changes with Filippo to learn more about him go to Stuart and that's spelled S-T-U-A-R-T Davis D-A-V-I-S dot com Stuart Davis dot com we're going to be talking more live with him right when we come back in just a couple minutes here on Life Changes Are you like many people who want to make positive changes and improvements in your life and in the world around you? Do you ever feel like there's something holding you back from achieving your true potential? Join Stefan and Shaylee Shefidel with the Tad James Company, the world's largest NLP, coaching, timeline therapy, and hypnotherapy training institute. Get ready for a life-changing experience that will give you the tools to transform your life through positive change and will help you create the future you want now. Their training programs are designed to provide you with the revolutionary knowledge, skills, and techniques necessary to effectively create long-lasting and life-changing effects. Discover more about neuro-linguistic programming and timeline therapy at www.nlpcoaching.com or call 888-440-4823. That's 888-440-4823. You are listening to Life Changes with Filippo on the BBS Radio Network with our host, Filippo Voltaggio. You can hear tonight's show and all our past shows, which include luminaries such as David Wilcock, Mariel Hemingway, Giorgio Sukalos, Marcy Shimoff, and Shadow Stevens on our archive page at our website at lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O dot com. Remember, you can also connect with us via Twitter and Facebook and now in our own community at lifechangesnetwork.com where real people come together to share real life in real time. That's lifechangesnetwork.com. Well, it sure is Life Changes, and here we are on our 200th anniversary, and we're talking to Stuart Davis here live, who's a writer, director, actor, comedian, songwriter. And, you know, I uh, just was thinking to myself, I've got to go see where he's performing next, because, Stuart, I haven't had the pleasure of seeing you live or meeting you, so I thought, okay, so let's see if he's performing anywhere near near where I live, and, of course, he is. But he's also performing all over. You are so busy. <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah, it is awesome. I, I, I'm actually about, uh, I think, 75 shows into a, about a 110-show tour in North America before I go to Europe for a year. And I love it. I mean, I'm completely... It's been an incredible tour. I've gone to pretty much every big and medium-sized city, most of them in North America. And I think by the time we're done, it will pretty much have covered everything. And it's just been an unbelievable blast. I mean, this is a very fascinating country. And I have been having a lot of the experience of going 
from one extreme in one corner to the other. The routing's been kind of nuts. So I'll be in Boston one day and then like over in uh, Seattle or Portland the next and then like, you know, in the middle of Iowa and then somewhere down south like New Orleans. And it's just been all over the map. And I have loved the disorienting, um, you know, that kind of jarring effect of popping from one city to the other and, and <laughs> really? marveling that this whole thing is is uh, a tapestry that's held together somehow. I mean, it feels like 10 different countries sometimes, but it's all one. And well, it's a lot of fun. Well, I, I, I want to let people know that, first of all, you're performing uh, uh, this weekend, actually, at GATE, uh, for those who don't know what that is, um, Global Alliance for transformational entertainment which is what uh you're all about and you'll be performing there and and presenting there with uh john rats and et cartole jim carrey olivia newton john i mean the list goes on uh, james van prod you know very cool and then just to give people an idea he'll be in uh, columbia south carolina on the 7th and nashville tennessee then new orleans albuquerque park city san francisco minneapolis i mean Wow. Okay. So um, good for you <laughs> and good for everybody. So <laughs> you, 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 you'll be changing lives all over. They'll be changing yours. And um, so, so, so here you are. You, um, you're doing what you do and you're living this moment uh, to the best you know how. And one of the things that you do is... Um, in this moment, you go out there. It's kind of like when I watched you, because I haven't had the pleasure of watching you in person, but when I watched you on video, it's like as far out as you could take your body and mind and, and, and the, you know, the audience experience, you go and come back and then go and come back. It's like you're this big rubber band or something. <laughs> it's like, like you're doing it all. That's, uh, I mean, I, I appreciate that description very much. I think that that I, I hope that that's true and i think the reason it is if it is is because i equate or blend in my um interpretation of art i, I blend it with shamanism and i see it as a very shamanistic practice and mm. you know i conceive of art and the the practice and expression of it as this unbroken line that goes back to you know, the very first moment of creativity, the very first moment that there was a human impulse to bring rise to something that didn't exist before. And that to me is particularly interesting because that predates religion, that predates language, that predates most of the systems and ways of interface that we take for granted as the bedrock of our social systems and intersubjective lives. And in reality, I, I'm very relieved to hold on to that tether and feel it go all the way back. And that's, I think, why I like to feel very far out places. I do like to rubber band into really dark stuff, sexual stuff, edgy stuff. But I also love equally in, in proportionate measure to shoot into the light and feel how the circumference of that sphere of what's available to us each individually and socially and collectively there's so much available to us in any given moment and it's just an amazing joy to get to test any of that so i feel really lucky to be an artist because that's one of the few places where that's expected and celebrated and cultivated rather than you know disallowed and forbidden so i would love to do more of that i mean i'm trying to study that continually and I would like to go twice as far in every direction before I leave this body. Wow. Well, um, you know, it's funny because what, what came to mind was uh, watching you. Um, uh, it was acting classes when I would have uh, instructors say to me, you know, Filippo, reach, go further, you know, try something out there. And they never demonstrated to me what that would look like. And while I was watching you on video at one point, I thought, that's what that looks like. I never had the role model. And so I could see you teaching that. I could see you doing workshops, helping people who live very closed lives to not be afraid to go out there because you can come back and still be you, but experience out there. <laughs> That's very true. That's a very interesting thing. I also, to bring it back to the audience, for me, the reason that I have felt supported 
and encouraged to have this as a practice spiritually and artistically is the audience has created over and over. I mean, at this point, it's, it's well over a thousand shows that I've done in my career. And I have this emotional experience with audiences of becoming vulnerable with them and exposing myself and figuratively and literally sometimes, you know, but really truly exposing my soul and, and the wounds and the secrets. And I have felt them over and over. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of times they catch me every time you almost will never ever find an audience. I mean, there are some exceptions in stand up comedy, but in general, every audience in the world wants to catch you and wants to support you and wants to see this happen. And it's exhilarating for me to be able to do it. And I think that it's enjoyable and useful somehow in, in different ways, depending on the night, for the audience to feel it happen. I mean, we're all really feeling it happen together. And in a strange way, they kind of lead that process. Um, so without that, I think... It, it does remind me of acting class as well. I've never taken that, but I know the principle involved in how um, you know these these available facets are are slowly you know these capacities are trained in us, and I feel like I've been trained by audiences in that sense. Wow, that's interesting. Trained by audiences. Well, well you certainly um, it, it sound like you've you've grown from being in front of uh, the audience. Um, but I, I, I'm sure the audience has grown along with you. So no wonder you have such a following of, of, of people that just like love what you do. And, and speaking of, of what you do, um, <laughs> I, I mean, to me, you're, you're a funny man. And so, you know, and then to others, you're this rock and roll singer and, 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 and obviously you're both. And that's, that's kind of the rubber band thing, right? Um, so let's talk about your singing for a little bit. Actually, why don't we do this? Let's um, let's set up this song, and um, have you uh, talk about it, and then we'll play a little bit of it. We'll go to commercial, come back, and talk more about your singing. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, yeah. So so um, I've been humming a beautiful place ever since I heard it. So if you don't mind, that's the one I'd like to share a little bit with we, the audience. If you could set it up for us, that would be great. Yes, definitely. It's. I'm glad that that is one you're playing. It's from the new record, Music for Mortals. And this song was a part of, you know, the, basically this whole record was about in, impermanence and was about the fact that we all die. And taking that sense of mortality and developing an intimacy with our impermanence. And then from there, trying to really find what is miraculous about that and what is full of light and transformation. And this song to me feels emotionally like moving my fingers into the mud and the soil and the dark stuff that I was afraid of. And like, once I get my wrist deep down in there, it's like pulling up jewels mm. from underneath the world and finding all of these shimmering, shining facets to death and that it doesn't have to be this heavy morbid thing so this song was written as kind of a human encounter with that part of my humanity while my dad was in the process of passing away and it was kind of from listening to his body and his experience that this came out mm, and appropriately called a beautiful place so here we're going to get a beautiful taste of Stuart, Stuart Davis singing from his new album a beautiful place.
listen to these words. He would not be beat by forces too fierce for man, woman, or beast. As the going got tougher, his courage increased. It's a little story with a big message, a message that speaks to children of all ages. It's about believing in yourself, overcoming obstacles, and never giving up. It's been called a masterpiece, one of the finest children's books ever written, and a true children's classic. Shadow Stevens has been called Dr. Seuss for the 21st century. His big little book, The Big Galoot, is a story about bullying. Bullying has become an American epidemic, and The Big Galoot talks about it in a way that will touch the heart of a child of four and a grandfather of 104. It's the story of a little boy with size 42 hands, the biggest hands anyone has ever seen, and the kids laugh at him, then the laughter turns mean. They mock him and trip him, and much worse. But throughout it all, Warren Galoot says, I'm a galoot, but I have good luck. You can't get me down. I never give up. A second grader named Chandler said, I thought it was the best funny book I have seen in my life. And we agree. Whoopi Goldberg said, this is a great story. Bravo, Shadow. The Big Galoot is available now as an e-book exclusively on Kindle Fire on Amazon for only $3.98. We strongly urge you to get it for your children, your children's children, or as a gift to yourself. Its message speaks to all of us. Have good luck and never give up. Go to Amazon.com and search for The Big Galoot by Shadow Stevens. There are self-help seminars costing thousands of dollars guaranteeing miraculous transformations. There are compelling speakers and life-changing weekend experiences where you can walk on fire. They all deliver revelations that guarantee you'll come back for the more expensive revelations filled with even greater wonder next month on Fiji. We get addicted to positive, heartfelt, expensive theater. What we really need is a jump start, an awakening. Someone who can give us a reminder that everything we need lies within. Through inspiration and practical knowledge, Dorothy Donahue helps people get grounded and motivated, inspired and energized. It's not just words and affirmations and the power of intention. It's a mindset brought about by a tangible, transcendental experience, an audiovisual, physical, spiritual experience that helps us realize we transform ourselves. We get tools to become the conscious co-creators of lives of unlimited potential. Find out more. Go to DorothyDonahue.com. You are listening to Life Changes with Filippo on the BBS Radio Network with your host, Filippo Voltaggio. You can visit us online via Twitter and Facebook and at lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O. Well, it is. It is, Filippo. And it is, again, our 200th anniversary show, and we are with Stuart Davis and what you heard just before we broke for commercial was Stuart Davis's song A Beautiful Place from Music for Mortals his new album that has come out you can learn more about it at his website or you can go directly to iTunes and put in Stuart Davis or put in Music for Mortals or that song even directly if you wanted to but check out the whole album at, on iTunes Music for Mortals and his uh, website again is stuartdavis.com just as it sounds and stuart is s t u a r t davis.com um and with that uh stuart a lot of people know you as a comedian or a tv um personality or a, a live performer or a singer um, uh, a rock singer, and, and here you are doing this kind of, of music. Can you talk to us a little bit about the involvement of music for you? Yeah, it's, you know, it's funny because music has really been my day job since I was, uh, I guess I started writing songs when I was maybe 13 years old, and I dropped out of college, not actually expecting to make a living as a musician, but I dropped out thinking I would go back. I was a music major studying composition and classical guitar. And I ended up getting work in Minneapolis where I was living at the time, which was my hometown originally. And I just thought, well, I'll do this until I can't do it anymore. And then I'll go back to college. And uh, that was, you know, 42 <laughs> years old. That was when I was, I was 20 20 years old, I guess, when that happened. And so 22 years later, I, that's still my position. I will go back to college <laughs> whenever <laughs> I can no longer make a living as a musician. 
go back, go back and get that orchestral composition degree that I know will be the big bucks. May you never have to go. Yeah, to and college. since then it's been, uh, <laughs> it's been, uh, you know, I was playing Minneapolis, and I so then that expanded to Minnesota. And then eventually that became the Midwest of Iowa and Wisconsin and the Dakotas and Illinois. And just gradually, year by year, you know, five years into it, then I was touring nationally. Uh, and it just was a very organic, gradual thing. Um, I put out a record a year for the first 15 years. And then I realized that I didn't have to, <laughs> though there was not actually an imperative from the universe that it's needed It's not a requirement. <laughs> Yes, I had a real kind of like um, uh, could not control. It was interesting because actually a friend of mine, Ken Wilbur, who's been a long time associated in a bunch of different stuff I do, is a very good buddy. And he was the guy who actually sat me down at one point and he said, listen, you have got to stop putting out all these records and just focus on making one of them a hit, (laughs) which... It really, honestly, it was so obvious once I heard it, but no one had ever said that to me before. And I reflected on it for a long time, and I thought, you know, that's actually, that's really true, because I just have a very addictive relationship to this constant stream of output, and I probably would, the work would benefit if I took more time with it and just sat, and I don't have to release every song that I write, I don't have to release a record every year, so... After that point, I began to take more time in how long I would write and, you know, uh, how long would we take recording them, much more pre-production, much more, um, not really experimentation, but starting around 2001 or 2002, we began to record songs in multiple ways. So we would take one song and maybe do three or four different versions of it over the course of months and look at it like a a building that you could walk around and say, Oh, I don't like that wall. Or what if it, you know, had a different portico or just all kinds of stuff like that. And, and we changed the way we made the records. And since then it's been longer. I think it was three years between my last album and, and this one that just came out. Wow. Well, may this one be the hit then. Cross so. our fingers. I mean, you know, it's kind of figuratively the hit because I also am uh, aware that what I do is not really, it's never jived with the straight uh, right angle conventional systems of the music business. And so it's kind of hit or miss. And, you know, whether or not those tumblers ever fall into place um, is, it's not really something we're thinking about too much when we're in there making them. But, I mean, what is a hit anymore anyway? It's all become so... I was just about to say, things are changing. So Yeah, just... Exactly. Allow it to be what it is, and, and may it be may it be the best it can. I just feel very lucky. I've been able to make the music that you know, I, I've been so fortunate to be able to record the songs and get to experiment and do them the way that we wanted to, and to have the support and freedom to do that. Because I think it's very very rare, and it's actually become more difficult for artists in some ways. I mean, the old system was cruddy, but the new system is also very indeterminate. And so you see a lot of paranoid, you know, uh, panicking. And so I hope that that, well, that the changes that are coming, you know, I mean, in the spirit of your show, I would love to see a return to a kind of more artistically focused cultural center. And mm-hmm. I think that that'll happen. I mean, I think it's a pendulum thing mm-hmm. that swings from time to time. Yeah. Yeah, I see it. So, Stuart, I'm going to step in. I want to ask you a quick question because of all the 200 guests that we've had on, I think I personally resonate with who you are the most. Yeah, in fact, he's been wearing his sunglasses the whole show. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! Seriously. <laughs> uh, you know, and, and I think it could benefit our listeners who are like you and I in that. Um, you know, where I'm drawing a similarity is is you know what you said at the outset, and and it's certainly it's 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 uh, captured in all that you do. Uh, but having explored the dark myself, as well as having explored the light, and finding beauty in 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 contrast and living contrast and pushing the envelope and and stumbling and and learning from those stumbles and and succeeding and learning from that. Uh, but you know, it, it, there's there. I, as difficult as it is to just be, which is m- more about what this show is, is 
uh, becoming uh, about every day. I think there's there's certainly less simplicity in just being when you have so many facets to who you are in that being, and and you and I have those facets. And for those, you know, what, how would you what, how would you share your ability to find the peace that you have in, in being from all those different or being in all those different places and being all of those facets and and owning the creativity that that uh, comes from that. Very funny thing happened, which is right on this just be thing, which is now I would say it's more like just be explosive and that I hadn't anticipated an increase in my passion. And I think what my spiritual practice and art and meditation in combination functioning like an integrated engine, it actually has increased everything simultaneously. So I do feel there's more peace and there is more stillness and there is simultaneously more passion. My mind works differently than it did 15 years ago. I can no longer, I mean, I can be contented and absorbed fully in one thing as I always have been. So if I'm painting a picture or writing a song, then that's it. But in the course of a day or a week, I find myself just radically in love and fascinated with everything from cosmology to linguistics to human relationships to the way my daughters laugh and what makes them laugh. Anything you could think of, I have a different emotional, spiritual response to it than I did 20 years ago. I think back in my early 20s, I was just hoping that somehow I was going to escape my own human experience, and I had a very sophisticated way of rationalizing that through spiritual practice and spiritual practice pulled a decoy move on me and instead of giving me that just gave me more of everything and gradually I have fallen in love with that in a way that now I'm really really grateful but I was terrified of it in my 20s I was much more afraid of and apprehensive of the intensity of all of that and now I know I'm going to be dead in no time. And I don't know if that's going to be a minute or 50 years from now, but I know that it will be just a moment and all of this will be gone. And so I feel that every day that I get to be alive, I want to embody and express and celebrate and cultivate as much of that as possible because it's so brief. And so that's why I feel like just be explosive and that there's really nothing to risk anyway because – we're all in the same condition. We just, we're mortals and there's impermanence at every turn. And so if you can surf with it and play with it and find the humor and magic, because there's a ton of humor in that. It's very, very funny, but it's not funny in a way that we would always, for me at least, uh, would have anticipated. And, you know, I also, I have to learn it over every day too. It's there, I definitely still have a dozen or multiple dozens of moments every day where I'm tempted or seduced to go back into a smaller regression or to implode or to protect myself and insulate. And I go through cycles of all that as well, but I'm just glad you asked that question. And I think that that's one of the big opportunities that there is for us right now in this, in this time, in this day and age, which is kind of, first of all, an access to all of the world's cultures. You know, if you were born 300 years ago, you probably wandered around in your village and you didn't encounter intimately the sum total available library of earth and all of its cultures and languages and artistic traditions and anything you can think of. I think that alone makes me just gaga with uh, <laughs> joy. I mean, that's amazing. I can't believe I get to have that available. So yeah, I could talk for a long time about that, but that's my short version. Well, I, I'm actually I'm glad Mark asked that so that you could share that because uh, that that is it sounds like the epitome of of who you are and how you got there at least uh, in a in a nutshell. Not that one can put Stuart Davis in a nutshell um, uh, or or define you in any way. Of course not. But uh, I, I know one thing for sure is that it's uh, been a pleasure having you on the show. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm, I really do uh, feel grateful. I love the show. And, you know, I'm, I want to say happy 200. That is so <laughs> awesome. Congratulations. That's huge. Thank you so much. Could you tell us a little bit what you're, about what you're going to talk about this uh, weekend at Gate? 
Um, I think if I remember correctly, I'm performing music. And so I don't remember if I'm supposed to speak or not. Um, oh, if I, bummer. If I do speak, I, I can't remember because they did ask me to do both. And I can't recall if I'm doing music or music and speaking. If I do music, I'll do... I, I don't know what I'll do usually until I get there. But if I speak, it would be some piece of comedy or, uh, you know, a monologue from the show or something like that about spirituality, which that would be interesting because, you know, sometimes the, the, sometimes the hardest sell for spiritual comedy is spiritual audiences, but it just depends. <laughs> and, um, you never know. That's a big room too. I mean, that's the Sabin theater. I think I was there last year. That's kind of a big yeah, theater. So. It'll be fun, and John, as you know, have you guys had John on the show? No, not yet. Actually, we've we've connected, and he wants to be on. So we're working on getting him on uh, soon after Gate because he's busy right now. Yeah, he is really busy. But another great guy. You're gonna connect and have a soul connection there as well. He's really he's on our team. He's a big big soul doing great stuff. Yeah, you know what? We I, I feel him and I, and I feel you, and I, I can't wait to uh, see you in person and uh, give you a big hug. Likewise, I love the hugs. <laughs> all about the hugs. You're all about the hugs and the hyphens, by the way. <laughs> Writer, <laughs> director, songwriter, producer. You, you 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 go. You just go, and and uh, and and more power to you. So, Stuart Davis, thank you so much, uh, and all the best. Thank you so much for having me on the show. All right. We'll connect soon. And we'll be right back after this short break uh, with our producer's rep and Mark LeJour. Are you achieving your highest potential? Do you know what that looks like? Louise Ashby Life Coaching makes it a mission to bring balance and abundance to every area of your life, giving you the opportunity to do and be all that you've dreamed. Anything is possible if you just believe. Contact author and motivational speaker Louise Ashby for your complimentary session and see if her individualized style is for you. You can email Louise at louiseashby.org. That's L-O-U-I-S-E-A-S-H-B-Y dot org or telephone 323-592-3181. That's Louise at louiseashby.org or telephone 323-592-3181. Life Changes with Filippo is a premier radio show presented by Life Changes Network, which is a company whose team has dedicated their lives not only to positive change, but to helping others observe and embrace, honor, and even celebrate their own changes, thus enabling a more positive, inspired life and helping to create a more positive and inspired world. From everyday people to corporate giants, celebrities, and children, we are here to help and to serve. With heart and experience, we bring our message and positive intent into your home or corporate office and even through appearances on your favorite shows. If you wish to learn more about Life Changes Life Coaching and a private consultation with one of us, corporate event appearances, or if you would like us to appear on your radio or TV shows, visit LifeChangesWithFilippo.com and click on our representation page. We're back. This is Filippo here on Life Changes with Filippo on our 200th show, and this is our producer's wrap. We haven't had quite that many producer's wraps, Mark, but we're, we're inching up there, too. Yeah, that's true. I think, uh, I think we started the producer's wrap about halfway uh, through. Yeah, maybe a little after, yeah, but, so. but still. But uh, this is uh, probably one of our better shows, I would have to say. Stuart is a lot of fun. character. Yeah. <laughs> well, we knew he would be. We knew he would be. We knew we'd have a lot of fun, and and I know that he was excited about being on the show. And yeah, um, I just wish I had my sunglasses. Yeah, well, that, we'll do that on uh, our three hundredth show uh, uh, when it's on television, and people <laughs> get to enjoy us with our te- with our sunglasses. Indeed. But so much, uh, you know, so much came through this uh, this show. Stewart is uh, is such a broad force of creativity and 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 reality all blended into one pack. Creativity and reality. I like that. You know, the question you asked him was uh, a great question because he he really got to talk about, and and I I was focusing on it too. It's like, you know, that's why I said the rubber band man because he's like, at first he's out there and then he's out there. And it kind of feels like, you know, he mentioned the dark and the light, 
but it kind of feels like some of the things that one would do that would normally be considered dark doesn't have to be dark. It's just another aspect of oneself. I mean, unless somebody's out there killing people, that's that's different. Well, judgment of dark and life is you know part of is a mental you know uh, a mental judgment based on on you know belief system. Um, there really you know is you know no right or wrong or no dark or light per se. It's the way we see it, but it's all aspects. It's variation of one you know spectrum of being. Yeah, so, so okay, so there it is. You know, people do kill people. But maybe if they weren't taught that some of the ways of being they are are bad or dark or whatever, then maybe they wouldn't feel the need to go do stuff like that. Well, you know, this is the point. This is why I asked the question because, I mean, you take it to that extreme and, and, and that certainly opens up a whole different uh, – uh, thought process or, or, or uh, yeah, I mean, I don't want to take it there, but, but, but even just the know. idea of living the, you know, or experiencing, you know, aspects of dark and light. I mean, there are people that choose to live in a very narrow window of, because of fear of, I can't go here. I couldn't do that. I could never try this. I yeah. That's not me you know, or that's not us. Yeah, or, I have to wear this and only this, or I have yes. to stand there or I have to sing only these songs or listen to only that, or I could never do all of those those limits and and uh, you know it, it, how much life is being missed, how much experience is being missed out on and and you know in my mind I've always lived with the what if what if there isn't a hell what if we are here to experience life what if this body is a tool for existence to to learn and to love contrast and 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 what if it's all okay. You know what? I'd rather, and that feels right to me, to be able to experience and live this life to the fullest, and and learn to love the the downside or the mirror aspects of that existence. And the upside is, I got an, I got, I got, I got an idea. Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy. <laughs> it's easy if you try. No hell below us. Yeah, you know there are some people on this planet that, uh, that have walked this planet that got it. <laughs> like maybe John Lennon at one point. Yeah. I mean, I don't know that he always had it, but it sounds like he had some. Yeah, he um, he figured it out. I, I believe. <laughs> um, and and you know, and that's that was the fun of talking to somebody like Stuart because if you. If you watch his humor, um, again, I, I refer to his humor, uh, maybe why? Maybe because I'm a singer and, and, and I, 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 like, I like his music. I, I mean, it's not that, but the humor surprised me. How do I say? It? You know, it's just like it, it caught me off guard because he can do things in his humor. Well, that's part that, of what we were talking about, right? Because he's, he's more than just a singer. There's, yeah. there's various elements to him, and that's part of the color. And and you know what? I, everybody possesses a little bit of that. Yeah, they, they exactly. Don't know how, this is why I asked the question. Exactly. They don't know how to bring out those multiple colors. I'm either this, or I'm a that, or I'm a carpenter, or I'm a plumber. I mean, God forbid, every you know does all of the things that they're able to, or even you know experiments with all the things that that they're able to. Yeah. Um, um, and I, I, you know, and I take that back. Although I, I do think you're a funny singer. His singing. <laughs> yeah, well, Thank you, I think. But I was just about to say that about uh, Stuart because uh, some of his songs surprised me too because some of them made me laugh, some of them made me think, and kind of like the one that we played today, um, just really thought-provoking and, and, and to know the backstory. And why are you cracking up? Why are you, why? I'm saying something serious Because I know here. I'm going to pay for that one later. <laughs> But it was worth it. I already forgot. And, and it is serious, and you're absolutely right. And that's what makes his way of bringing what he has come to know forward so powerful is that he serves it up in, from various perspe- from various perspectives, various ways. You know, it, it can be funny, and he can be very serious, and he can be very real and raw. And it's been an honor to have him on the show and, and for us to be able to share uh, in his knowledge and his being. Yeah, and it's uh, been an honor to do 200 of these and to have 200 people on this show and actually um, more than 200 people because we've done um, special uh, editions where we've just done um, uh, on video 
uh, actually, as well. So, but at least with BBS Radio here, this is our 200th show, and it's it's been an honor to be, like Mark said, raw uh, and and open and sharing and putting ourselves out there uh, and our life changes for to help you all and yours. So. Um, with that, I, a special thank you again to Dorothy Donahue, our producer, and um, and to all of you who have been with us all this time or some of this time, uh, and and to BBS Radio, we we thank you and we look forward to many many more. I am Filippo Voltaggio here on Life Changes with Filippo, reminding you that as life changes, we're here for you. Ciao, everyone. You have been listening to Life Changes with Filippo with the master of change, Filippo Voltaggio. Listen live every Monday night at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on the BBS Radio Network and visit us online at lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O. Today's show has been made possible in part by our sponsors, Ionways Water Systems, Change Your Water, Change Your Life, and Love and Miracles with Dorothy Lee Donahue. To learn more about them, visit the sponsor page of our website. Once again, join us here next week as we consciously explore and embrace the only constant, life changes. Life changes.